Years ago, her classmates probably didn't pick Jan Brewer as most likely to one day become governor. But for 33 years, people have consistently underestimated Arizona's 22nd governor. Just ask her opponents in 24 elections. She never lost, not once. Tonight, we take a look back at her time as governor in her final television interview before she leaves office after five years. When are you actually have to be out? I, I should be, I don't actually have to be out till the 5th, but um, till he's sworn in, but we will leave probably on the, we, well, we will leave on the 2nd. So how does, how does a girl from Glendale, California end up in this situation? <laughs> I don't know, um, being in the right place at the right time, I guess. Uh, but the timing was not you know. of her choosing. Brewer became governor when Janet Napolitano, with a year left in her term, departed to join the Obama administration. Did you ever really think that you'd end up here? No, never. I, did, I had no desire to be governor. I never felt uncomfortable that I couldn't do the job. I, I never felt like I couldn't do the job. I just knew that it was so, it was going to be tough because things were tough not only in Arizona, but they were tough across the country. She drew on her 14 years in the Arizona legislature. I know what's going on at the legislature. And um, so I wasn't like shooting in the dark. I could play the game as well as they could. But there were bumps along the way. SB 1070, which took a hard line on illegal immigration, gave Arizona some bad national press. Do you regret it at all? 1070? No. Do you regret signing? No. I believe in the rule of law, and it is the law in the state of Arizona. And then there was this, perhaps the most enduring image of Jan Brewer's years as governor. I'm expressive, and that it was like I was speaking for a lot of Americans, a lot of the people, and they, they, they appreciated it. They did. So you would not take it back? No. It became a national metaphor for standing up to Washington. Is there any anything that you would say, boy, I'd like a do-over on that? I would have liked to have been able to work with the federal government to get my borders secure because I think that we would have been able to solve a lot of these other issues. Do you think it became personal? I think in the end, maybe it was a little bit more personal than what it should have been. But the bottom line is, is that um, the, 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 the liberal administration in Washington, D.C., they didn't want our borders secured. They wanted that gateway. They had, too, a plan, and they were in the position to deliver it. She ran to remain governor in 2010 and won by double digits. She calls it the high point. Vindication, right? Vindication, uh, winning overwhelmingly on my own. She had proved the critics wrong again, even after stumbling in a debate with that painful 16-second brain freeze. It's one of those things in life. People thought it was going to be the ruination of my election. Everybody was, it was very uh, concerned, everybody but me, I guess. And I just thought, well, I make fun of myself about it. <laughs> And maybe that ability to not take herself too seriously, along with persistence, is why she ended up here with this view. I have no regrets. I believe that it has been the greatest honor of my life uh, to serve uh, the state of Arizona. What one piece of advice would you give Doug Ducey, knowing what you know now from when you first walked into this office? Do what you think is right, because that's what you were elected to do. It's not about being part of a Brewer championed a temporary sales tax increase, you might remember, to fund state government during the recession. And she greatly expanded Medicaid, two issues that rankled many Republicans. But again, she insists they were the right moves. My entire interview with the governor can be seen on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Fox 10 Phoenix.